Hello there. Wait, we're not are we live? Yet. Okay, not yet. Not now okay. we are. <laughs> now we're live? All right. Yes. Yes. Hello. Three, two, one. <laughs> Hello, everyone. You're not Welcome. supposed to say the two and the one. <laughs> All right. Well, we're live. Hello, everyone. Hello, Internet. I'm going Fast. first. I'm interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Chai Chi Tai Chi web show. <laughs> I'm Dane Dormio, joined by my buddy Andrew Brown, <laughs> I'm, who I'm looking forward to asking a really exciting question about Tai Chi. Andrew, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well, Dane. Uh, it's had a good long day, had a great lunch. It's time to talk about my favorite subject, Tai Chi. Yes. Yes, indeed. My favorite subject as well. One of many. Um, and the, the specific question I want to ask you about, because I know you've you've got a great perspective on this. And this is this is something that that you you teach and talk about a lot. It's kind of kind of a, a FAQ about Tai Chi is what are the eight universal energies of Tai Chi? This is something that that experienced Tai Chi players or practitioners may be familiar with, but this is also a good introductory point to Tai Chi because these are eight universal principles and energies that are, that encompass the, the movement of Tai Chi and are pretty much universal to, to all Tai Chi styles. So I'd yeah. love for you to tell us what those eight universal energies are and, and tell us a little bit about how they work. All right. That sounds quite all right. So eight powers, eight little uh, jings is what they're called. So Peng Lu, Ji An, Sai Lie, Zhou Kao. So now you know them all. We're all done. <laughs> the, the character explains what it is. So Peng, let's go with Peng. So Peng is the first and it's the most essential technique it's the technique that most teachers seek to perfect uh, because it's it's the most natural. It's the it's the technique from which all other techniques uh, spring. So if you understand Pung, you can understand every other technique pretty, pretty easily. So Pung translates uh, as ward off. That's a pretty standard translation. I like to think of it as expanding or spiraling. Uh, but ward off would be, I am solid in this chair. Someone pushes on me and you can't compress me because the chair, it supports my body and the chair is in Pung itself. So I'm connected to the chair. The chair is connected to the world. Everything that is existing <clears throat> is in the Pung state. So that is the essence of Pung power. So when you push on my chest, you can't move me because I'm transmitting the energy into the earth and I am joined with the earth and we are both Pung. So that's, that's what Pung is. Do you have any questions about Pung before we move on? Well, it's, it's interesting to hear it put that way because I, I certainly think of the, the connection, the rootedness being a component of it, but also I've always associated Pung with like a springy quality. Yeah, yeah, springing that ward off quality. So as you as you add pressure and try to compress me, the the Tai Chi player, I expand myself and don't let you compress me anymore. And then as you keep trying to force yourself through, I can just roll and you fly and you fall away. Because you keep trying to push a a, a beach ball into the water, the ball will eventually pop away. It'll slide away from your hand. You can't actually compress the ball under the water. You can't push the ball any further than it can go, and it will just bounce off of you. So you are trying to be this bouncing kind of force whenever someone makes contact with you. You bounce them off you. That's uh, that's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen is someone just walks up, tries to push the Tai Chi teacher, and they bounce back like six feet. You know, those are the most impressive techniques I've ever seen. So Pung is Besides. rootedness and springiness. Yeah, rooted springiness, ward off. Uh, these are all different ways to say it. But the, the best way is to feel it. That's always the best way to understand these techniques is to get a good teacher and feel the, the essence. 
So usually we feel it through push hands. That's primarily when we feel these powers. And Pung is the essential one. So if you learn Pung, uh, then you can understand the rest of Tai Chi. All right. And, and, and what are the other seven then? Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> so after Pung, we come to Lu or rollback. Rollback is kind of like yielding or letting the force happen without you interrupting uh, the force. So the thing of the force is like an arrow coming into you. And instead of taking that arrow directly into your chest, you just turn your body and let it slide past you within a millimeter. But it doesn't hurt you whatsoever. And you've done nothing to stop that power. You just help it along in its path. That would be uh, Lou, in my opinion. Like yielding kind of, to something. Letting it just go right by you. Kind of like the the swinging doors in Old West Western Saloon. <laughs> Saloon, yeah. Uh, I like to think of... Uh, so one of the things I notice in a lot in when I teach self-defense is... Yeah. Because with that, with that yielding, there's also a rootedness that goes along with it. And like the, the post... Yeah that, yeah, that the door is fixed to is is like the rooted point, but the but the you know the door itself is, is free to move. So like yeah, it's well, rooted you know. at the axis. Uh, exactly. So yeah. yeah, like your legs become rooted, your lower body becomes this axis that everything else can turn around, and your upper body is like a leaf. And when you get pushed on your upper body, your upper body just moves like a leaf would out of the way of your finger, and the power goes right by. So you don't stop the power with your body. You let your root, uh, you let your body be like a hinge and you let the power just flow. All right. So uh, any questions about Lou? So what, what was the next one you were starting to talk about? Okay. Well, after Lou comes G. G is squeeze or press. This is, uh, I, I've seen it described as uh, an earthquake fault line where the two pieces of rock are smashing into each other. And you, by creating that bridge, that locking point, you can compress your opponent and then move them anywhere. You break their line, you break their power, and then you just tap, touch them and you take their base, you take their balance. G is one of those tougher ones. It's a really good to feel G. But basically, if my arms are out and I, uh, and then the player, Air compresses in the elbow, brings my, my elbow into my body. I'm trying to resist, but I can't squeeze me. He's made it so I can't use my power at all. I can't manifest any power. But squeezing is, if that helps. <laughs> does, it, does, it, does it necessarily involve applying force in two places or from two directions? It doesn't imply having to do it from two directions it's more of a single point of focus you focus uh the uh the tai chi player would use would expand into a position without using any energy you're not trying to use force you're not forcing your way through you just expand yourself into the open air which allows you to fill a space that is uncomfortable for your opponent and you squeeze their body by expanding into them and you break their structure. And then once their structure is broken, you move on to the next technique, which is on or push or uh, most, uh, most of the time you see it, it's like a toss. It's like, I've taken their structure, I've taken their balance. Now I just give them a little two handed push and they fly a few feet or they lose their balance and take three steps back or, they fall on the ground. Whatever, whatever you do in that on is taking their. It's applying your power into them. So you're saying that that Lou is kind of like the the <clears throat> the the act of getting someone stuck against their own edge, the the their their own edge of movement, so that they're they they to some extent they they topple the their structure. And and equilibrium uh, fails; they lose the integrity of their root, and then they're off balance and susceptible to being pushed or tossed. Tossed, yeah, 
exactly. That's that's the whole Peng Lu Ji on is the essence. Uh, that's the first four techniques of Tai Chi. And it's considered, if you can master these four techniques, you've mastered Tai Chi. Because the next four techniques are to fill in the gaps that to make up for your lack of being perfect in the first four techniques. So what? the first four directions is the first four techniques and then the corners are the second four techniques. Would, uh, would you think it was accurate to say that, that, that Pung and Lu are kind of, uh, what to do if someone is is coming at you with something and and g and on are sort of what to do if someone is defending or kind of the way to defeat mm, mm, i like that move. yeah the first two are very defensive and the second two are more offensive and that's true i've noticed that as well uh yeah so you would pong so if someone's coming at you with a baseball bat whatever you expand space, so and then and then you roll back, you loo to let the power flow through instead of taking the power on directly. So using that spiral turn, like you step in, catch the base of the baseball bat, catch their arm with the other hand maybe, and then just roll through by taking another step. And then you squeeze their body. So you take you like you squeeze into the elbow, take their balance, take their posture, and then you toss them. That would be a pretty standard application of the Peng Lu Jian sequence. And uh, as my teacher said, you're always trying to do Peng Lu Jian, not just Peng, not just Lu, not just Ji. You're trying to make all four techniques appear in one or two movements. All right. So what about the second four of the- Okay, so now movement. we're gonna move on to the corners. So now we move on to the corners. So uh, if you look at the the Bagua, which is like the eight um, the eight trigrams, you'll see all of these things how they manifest with the Tai Chi techniques, and you'll see the exchange and the Taoist uh, philosophy of how it all works out, like mountains versus ocean versus or mountains versus lake uh, versus sky, heaven, that kind of stuff. So it's fun. All right, Tsai is the next one. This is uh, plucking or grasping. So a Tsai technique tends to be whenever you see a hook hand in uh, in the form, that's like implying a Tsai technique. So uh, if you notice, you know, we just explore your own body. You can take your fingers and you can pluck your tendons in your, in your elbows and your knees, and your ankle, and you can feel where you have these interconnecting tissues. So a tsai technique is grasping or plucking at these different corners of the body. So catching someone's elbow and controlling it, uh, that would be a tsai technique. So do you have any questions about tsai? It, so, so it has to do with grasping and or pulling? Grasping and plucking tends to be the, the best translations. And uh, the best, the ways I've seen it applied uh, in many different applications are tend to be catching an elbow, catching a wrist, and doing a, a, a chin na technique on it. Psi techniques tend to be tend to lead in the chin na techniques. So joint locking comes from psi. And uh, one of the young, I think it was Yang Yang Wang Ting, he would uh, practice the the hooking hand. And when he was with his students, there's this fun story that he would crush the walnuts with his with his thumb and forefinger, the index finger and his thumb, he would crush the walnuts. And these people were using their the tool and stuff, but he was doing it with just his hand. And he said, all you have to do is practice the hook. All you have to do is practice sigh and you'll be able to do this yourself. <laughs> so 40, 50 years of practice, and then maybe we'll be able to crush walnuts with our bare fingers. <laughs> All right, well, the next technique is lié, or split. Uh, this one is easy to demonstrate. Say if someone's pushing you on their chest, uh, pushing your chest, splitting them would be one hand comes above, one hand comes below, and you split the power in two directions. So one hand, 
one direction would go high, one direction would go low, and all their power is broken. So it's like you're breaking their their line of power. And uh, I've also seen Lie used, uh, say, like on a on the with a Lou. So you do a rollback, you catch an elbow, so you do like a an arm bar or an arm lock, and Lie would be taking that arm lock down deep into the ground and taking your opponent down to deep into the ground. So you're splitting their power, you're splitting their stance. And then uh, after that, then we go into the Joe and Cal. So Joe is- It makes me, elbow. that one oh, actually yeah. makes me think of the saying, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So- <laughs> That's good, that's, yeah, that's, that's what, you're, what doing. you're doing. with their structure, right? His yeah, you're splitting their structure into two directions, breaking their posture, breaking their balance. And then you can do anything. Uh, Joe techniques are the elbow, but in Chinese martial arts, we link the elbow and the knee together. So when we talk about the elbow, we're also talking about the knee. So the Joe techniques deal with the these hard slicing bones. So think of your elbow as like a sword, really powerful, really good striking surface. You can take a lot of pressure at the elbow and it won't really injure you. Uh, if you notice Muay Thai players, they like to use their elbows a lot and they can do a lot of damage really quickly with a good elbow strike. So we have the same benefit in Tai Chi by using the entire body. And so we use the elbow and the knee just like they do. And then finally we get to the last technique, which is Kao. Uh, this translates to shoulder, but it implies body techniques. So anything using the torso. So I'm using my shoulders, my head even, my spine, my hips, like these, any technique where I'm actually making contact with these parts of my body, this is called a, this is a cow technique. So I, uh, I can do a hip bump, I can uh, do a shoulder bump, all these different uh, types of techniques uh, emanate from cow. And so you learning how to use all the essences of Tai Chi is like learning how to use your entire body as a weapon. So that's, that's the best way to think about it. So when you master hey. the first four, you've mastered the essence of Tai Chi. When you master all eight, you've mastered your entire body and you can generate power at any point on the body. So let me see if I can summarize. If you, if you master all these eight energies, that means that you'll be able to take some kind of incoming force or attack that's coming in. You'll be able to to neutralize its forward momentum and and or yield out of the way to let it pass and or reverse its momentum to send it flying away you'll be able to uh, you'll you'll be able to grasp pull manipulate joints in in terms of leverage and joint locks you'll be able to to fight at uh, essentially at, at, at all, at all ranges from, uh, from the edge of your reach to, to mid range, knee and elbow range, uh, to close in, um, uh, what, what might be called clinch range or, or basically where you're, you're standing yeah. right on top of the other person. Yeah. Um, well, Tai Chi is a middle to short range style. So we, uh, don't, really practice the long range engagement as much as we practice middle and short range engagement. So uh, we, we like to get in close and then perform uh, joint locks and do takedowns, throws. Uh, we're not big fans of long range punching and long range kicking, like say Taekwondo or Muay Thai would be. Um, so we focus on getting in close and using our balance to our benefit, using the strongest thing that we have is our balance, and that's what that's what makes Tai Chi people uh, impressive. That was why I got into Tai Chi because I wanted to learn how to balance. <laughs> yeah, I actually have I've heard it described as that if you if you uh, have, have heard Tai Chi described as essentially a grappling art, and at, at least that's uh, that's a very a very powerful way to look at it. That that's um, Essentially, it's about uh, getting getting in directly to the center, getting directly to and controlling the center, 
and yeah. yeah, and and everything outside of that is kind of peripheral. That's true because it only matters what reaches you at the core. You don't need to extend your foot and extend your hand really far out to engage your opponent. You just have to let them come to you because they're not a threat until they come close to your torso and until they actually try and threaten you with bodily harm. So there's no reason to go long distance and attack someone else. You're always waiting for someone to attack you because you have no energy. You're not generating energy. You're just transforming their energy. Or to put it another way, you, uh, you do your work, you do your best work close into your center because that's where you have all of your leverage. It's true. And, yep, yep. Uh, and, and what you're trying to control or manipulate the other person is not their extremities, but their center. You're trying to directly manipulate their center because that's where they have all their leverage and power, and that's what you're trying to disrupt, essentially. Exactly, exactly. So just remember, always pong, always spiral. That's what we're always trying to do is expand ourselves and spiral outward. And by constantly changing just a little bit by spiraling always in every direction you can, you can break their structure. You can break anything that's in your way. Is the spiral kind of a combination of Pung and Lateral and translational movement. So it's like a, a forward vector. It's like a drill. Think of it like a drill. You're always drilling into your opponent. You're never just going straight forward in a line, you're always drilling at them. That's the that's one of the primary differences. What I was asking, is that kind of a combination of Pung and Lu in the sense that you're expanding while part of you is expanding while part of you is yielding? Uh, I like that. That's, that's, that's kind of, that's very true. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, because you, as you encounter resistance by encountering the, the opponent, instead of fighting the resistance, you yield around it, you roll around that resistance and then find a, find a way in and then you just continue the power. Uh, it is said that the uh, Chun Tai Chi, the Lao Jia style is like a flowing river and the Xinjia style is like a strong whirlpool. So we just continue to flow through the opponent. We keep moving through and nothing can really stop us in the Lao Jia style. And Shinja, when they come in close, we catch them in our whirlpool and we bring them in close and then we spit them out whenever we're ready. So that, uh, that is a, a really great and accessible summary of the energetic components of Tai Chi and, and kind of how this relates with the, the fundamental types of, of movement from uh, and, and, and how all of the, the, the movements and energies of Tai Chi relate to sort of martial applications. So I'm sure that a lot of people listening to this uh, are familiar with these and, and hopefully this provides some fresh perspective and, and a lot of people listening to this are probably also completely new to all of this stuff. So hopefully this is understandable and accessible. And of course it's, as you said, it's the, it can, there's only so much that could be taken into the intellect to really get it. You have to physically experience it and, and, you know, you'll, you'll feel it and, and kind of get it kinesthetically. So what can people do if they are interested in learning more about this and and working with us all right well first of all anywhere in the world from anywhere at all as long as you got the internet you can find the online learning community at uh, patreon.com slash chai tea tai chi and then we also have uh classes and seminars and private training in san diego through meetup.com slash chai tea tai chi and then right here you're watching us right now you can come right back here and find us again. We make Facebook videos every week or two. And then uh, I know, Dane, you're making videos like crazy, talking to cops, doing all this stuff about uh, lots of different topics. So you're always online. <laughs> so come find us on Facebook and Instagram, Chai Tea Tai Chi. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And thanks for sharing all this great information this evening. I, Always love having the chance to talk about these topics and 
and dig into some of these ideas. Yeah, yeah. It's always a good time. Thanks very much for having me. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a bunch. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay. Live long and prosper. Peace. Hitting the button.